Good morning. On this 4th of July weekend, we remember our independence. Independence is something that we see in the news, as in the case of Ukraine, where people strive to have liberty and freedom and a democratic way of life. And so, let us begin today with the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag and then the singing of our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves, that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of your conscience. For the penance that you are asked to fulfill for a worthy confession, I ask that for the Next three nights, beside saying your evening prayers, that you would please read the Gospel of our Lord and reflect upon its meaning. And now, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord Grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. And with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the peace of Jerusalem, pray. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your ramparts, prosperity with your towers. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, O Lord our God, you taught us that those who make peace are your children. Pour forth your grace into our hearts so that all conflict may disappear. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty Eternal Father, as we celebrate our independence, we pray this day that your blessings might rest upon our nation. Grant wisdom to our leaders, so that we might continue on the path of democracy, freedom, and independence. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, as we observe the 10th anniversary of the passing of our brother, Donnie Harrison, into his eternal rest, we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept him into your eternal kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the 14th Sunday in the Ordinary Time, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her. All you who love her, exult, exult with her. All you who were mourning over her, so that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent, as nurslings. You shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I do not busy myself with great matters, with things too sublime for me. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, brothers and sisters. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Say to him, peace be with you, my brother, and with your family, and with all belong who belong to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed seventy-two others, whom He sent ahead of Him in pairs to every town and place He intended to visit. He said to them. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet to no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him, but if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go, in, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Solomon on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord.
what a way to end the song. <laughs> I welcome you to church this day. On this, the 4th of July weekend, I'm sure that there are those who are not in church today that are preparing for the 4th of July, but yet there are those of you who have come to take a portion of your time to give praise and honor to God our Heavenly Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We read in today's Gospel, according to Luke, that there were 72 others whom Jesus had appointed. And he sent out them two by two. So, if we take that into understanding, there were 35 teams that were sent out to preach the central message. And what was that central message? The kingdom of God is at hand. In the Gospel of Mark, we find that when Jesus, following his baptism and coming out of the wilderness where he was tempted and he was able to define his ministry, that was one of the first messages that he shared. The kingdom of God is at hand. Now, there is discrepancy in Holy Scripture, and it's not the first discrepancy. Because you have to understand that there were four evangelists who wrote at four different times. There are some, especially in the Gospel, if I'm not mistaken, of Luke, who also mentioned about 72. So there's a little bit of confusion. But whatever the case, our Lord called others to come and to preach the message that the kingdom of God is at hand. This is one of the central themes that he had spoken to the twelve, the first chosen. Why are there twelve apostles? It is believed that, as I have said, the great theologian St. Augustine said, the new is contained in the old, and the old is revealed in the new. And so we believe that Jesus chose twelve apostles to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you know that the kingdom of God is still at hand? Do you also know that you are his disciples, whom he chose? Every single Sunday at the end of Mass, we read from the Gospel of John, for as many as received him and believed in him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. You are God's child. He brought you into this world. He did not cause you just to go through life aimlessly. But those who have been baptized into the faith and take the time to read the Word of God understand that God had a divine plan for you. And that the minute you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, is the time that Jesus, as we recall, who said unto his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so as disciples, we are placed in the world where there is so much chaos and confusion, division and polarization. But the fact remains is that Christ's word never changes. It is the standard. As we enter the church and as we exit the church, we see the symbol of the Polish National Catholic Church. And what are the three words? Truth, work, and struggle. And underneath there is the Polish word, vis, which means we will overcome. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, just as the 72 came back and said unto Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us 
because of your name. Whenever we gather into the church, we come to give God our praise and our thanksgiving. We are not meant to just sit in the church to hear the priest celebrate Holy Mass because it is a celebration that we all share in, just as we all share in the discipleship of Jesus Christ. And so what are we called upon to do? To know the Word and to live the Word. None of us are perfect. We all fall short from the grace of God, as Paul said. But it is through the grace of God that we are saved. You know, there is a portion that says Jesus, after the 72, returned and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. There are some theologians who have looked to try to understand this difficult passage. For me, it is not difficult at all. When Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky, what caused Satan to fall like lightning from the sky? What is the central theme of Jesus? What did he come and to not only preach himself, but also to share with all those for whom he had called? The kingdom of God is at hand. It was, it is, and it will be. And whatever life we are given by God, we are called upon to preach in whatever way possible that the kingdom of God is at hand. Whether it is trying to feed the, the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, pray for those who are having difficulties and to realize and it might seem that we say it over and over again that the Lord Jesus and it's not coming from me but I merely share the Lord who said you have not chosen me I have chosen you and appointed you that you go and bear much fruit and so, my brothers and sisters, may we concentrate on the prize. Because as we celebrate this 4th of July weekend and independence, it is in knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who says to each and every single one of us, today and tomorrow and whatever time we have here on earth, Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised, now and forevermore. Amen. I be he leaving one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. The word that I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day.
to teach us and to make us full holy. Through your Holy Spirit, you give your gifts of grace in every time and season as a guide for your holy church. Therefore, we join this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we gather at the table of the Lord, may we offer prayers for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we offer prayers for those suffering from the coronavirus, and pray for not only them, but also for their families. Let us give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. In our most sincere and humble prayer, let us remember and offer prayer for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, Pray this day for all who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, that God would bless them, protect them by his holy angels, and return all of them safely to their homes and families. May we also pray this day for each other and for all present here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that so moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. 
for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, today remember your servant, Donnie Herzig, and all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To his soul and to all souls who have rested in Christ and rest in Christ, we pray a gift of refreshment, light, and peace through the same. Christ our Lord, amen, and grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of, of your mercy, some part and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence,
present and future by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary. Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and ever let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise. Will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, those of you who cannot receive the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, may we at this time offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your gift of the Eucharist. Give us ears to hear your word, faith to receive it, and strength to proclaim it. Amid all the confusions and tensions of this present time, may we always abide in you as your or her peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father, as we gather on this weekend of our independence, 
We pray for your grace and blessings of your Holy Spirit to bless our great nation. May we be the standard of freedom, democracy, and independence. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, O merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brother in blessed memory, Donnie Herzog, whose 10th anniversary of passing we honor, be joined with you in the New Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effected for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being. And apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank Thanks be to God. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 